Hello guys and welcome back to the MD Investor channel. The channel where we take personal finance seriously by increasing our financial IQ so we can break the cycle of generational poverty. If this is your first time, welcome. Where have you been? If you're a regular, let's get into it because you know what we do. Before we get into it, if there's people you think could benefit from them from this personal finance information, let them know about the MD Investor. Send them the link, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. But let's get into it. Today's video is going to be about bad financial advice that we've gotten. Bad financial advice that we've gotten. We all like good advice. Wise counsel from people who are seasoned, know what they're doing, and have our best interests at heart. But bad advice in any category. But financial advice, keep it to yourself. So we're gonna go through these. I'm sure you have other bad, fight, bad financial advice that people have given you. So let me know in the comments what I missed, okay? Let me know in the comments what I missed about bad financial advice you, you got. Uh, but let's get into it. Number one, bad financial advice that we have gotten from people is the stock market is a gamble. The stock market is a gamble. Don't put your money into it. You know, it's like a, it's like a roulette, it's like a roulette wheel. It's like playing blackjack, you don't know what's gonna happen. It's like playing three card monkey. Everybody in New York City, you know, you, you know about that. They have those beads on the thing, and they're moving, they're moving the cup around and show me where it is, and you get your money. It's a gamble. Which is so bad, misleading information. We know about that. People putting out not lots of wealth have been created through the stock market. The majority of people have their retirement account in the stock market. The stock market has returned and at, on an annualized basis over the last 100 years, 10%. It's not 10% of the year. Some years it's down 5%. Some years it's down 10%. Other years it's up 12. Other years it's up 20. But taking everything together and divided by 100, it's been 10 years return every year. Right? If you're gonna need money within five years, don't put this up market, right? Because it's too volatile. But telling people it's a gamble, it is not helpful. Especially when the stock market participation of black African American people is much lower than it is for the majority. Okay? So I was reading a study that said that about half of black women, particularly they were looking at, do not have a brokerage account. A lot of people. And the reason is why. And a lot of it could be from their upbringing. People saying, you know, talking down, talking negative to it, saying, oh, you know, put your money in. It's like, um, it's like gambling has a negative connotation that the house is, has, has an exorbitant amount of uh, advantage and you're essentially um, putting your money at risk. There's a risk in everything. We know that. Okay? But there's certain risks you gotta take, right? You get every morning, you go to work. You, you drive, there's a risk that you may have a car accident. So you, you're not going to drive, there's a risk you may, you, may, you, you know, you may um, have a plane accident when, you, when you're in a plane, you're not going to fly, right? So, but telling people misleading information that it's talking about the gamble is misleading, okay? And it links to what we see, a much lower participation in the stock market and wealth creation um, in black and African American communities because of this notion that the stock market is a gamble. Number two. The safest place to put your money is in the bank. I don't know, anybody ever heard that? The safest place to put your money is in the bank. When we know that the big banks are giving you essentially zero percent interest for using your money. 0.05 percent, what are you going to do with that? That's why at the end of the year, when they send you your 1099 INT, which is the form that financial institution got to send you for the interest you return, the interest you gain, so you can send it to IRS. Three dollars in interest. Five dollars in interest. They use your money for a whole year. 365 days, they use your money in your savings account at JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citibank. They use your money for 365 days and they give you nothing for it. That's safe? Well, at least, you know, it's FDIC protected in case something was to happen. What about 
inflation. Two to three percent. So your spending power is not it's two to three percent two to three percent less than it was in the beginning of the year. But you have not kept up with inflation because they're paying you nothing. The safety place to put your money in not the bank. That's a lie. Just like it's safe to put your money under the mattress. It's not safe. One, inflation, the money that you put there is going to have less purchasing power at the end of the year. And two, that's the first place we're going to look. Avoid credit cards. You ever heard that? Avoid credit cards. We know what they're saying. They're saying they really mean avoid credit card debt. Don't carry balance. Yeah, if you're going to be smart and use the card and don't carry balance, Yeah, you know, don't carry balance because it's going to be fees, high interest fees. We agree with that. But there's some benefits of using credit cards. Use it correctly, don't carry balance, pay it off at the end, you know, at the end of each month. Only buy stuff that you need, all right? Or stuff that you have cash to pay for in your account. But there's some additional benefits such as credit card points, reward points. Someone they give you dollar for dollar cash back or a certain percentage, right? On certain categories. You, know, you, you buy gas and we'll give you. One dollar back for every whatever grocery you get X amount of back. So there's some benefits using credit card. In addition to points, you can use people use credit card points to travel. You know, free airline miles and you know upgrades and they use it to go to hotels and you know. So credit cards have certain benefits. In addition to they have certain things like. Um, for example, if you have a dispute with a merchant, you know, credit card will allow you to have a dispute with a merchant. Say, no, that was too much, or, you know, there was a raisin. Cre um, um, so protection from the credit card. We have a dispute with a merchant now. And only because we use a credit card. If we had used debit card, there'd be nothing. Money's gone. And warranty, right? Somebody may rent a, rent a car with American Express, I know, and you may have an additional, um, additional, uh, insurance above the regular. So there is some protection with credit cards. So telling people to avoid all credit cards is really not the best um, it's not the best advice you can give them. You gotta be a little nuanced, okay? Avoid carrying balance and so on. But if you handle it correctly, the credit card can be a very smart way to travel and so on. Let's keep going. Number four, bad advice that we get we've gotten. Don't get into debt. You ever heard that? Do not get into debt. And we know what they're saying, but you gotta be a little nuanced. Debt, like credit card debt we spoke about, furniture debt and buying depreciate, depreciating assets and financing them over the long term and paying interest, yes, that's stupid. But, you know, certain debt can be smart. You take a reasonable amount of debt to get a marketable degree that you're gonna be able to pay uh, you know, get uh, get well compensated and pay off your debt soon and live a good life. Smart debt. Take it out debt at a very low interest rate and using that money to invest in something that's going to give you a higher return. So it's like maybe a home equity line of credit. You'll take it out at a very low interest rate and use it to invest in property or stocks at a much higher return. Using OPM, other people's money. That's smart debt, smart leverage. Using uh, a business loan to start up, get your business up and running. You get your good return. That's smart debt. But don't tell people to avoid all debt. Again, we gotta be a little nuanced. We gotta be a little, little educated, okay? And that's what we're doing by watching that MD investor. If you're getting value, just give me a thumbs up, okay? Let me know. Leave me a comment about other bad advice that maybe I missed on this list and maybe bad advice that you've gotten. Let's get back into it. And don't forget to subscribe. Let's get back into it. Number five. I don't know if you ever heard this one. I have. I was actually on that path. Paying off your home early. Anybody ever heard that? You got a 30 year mortgage and you're like, man, I can't wait till this mortgage is gone. What you gonna do about it? I'm gonna start paying extra money every month. And then I'll be so happy. Pay off that mortgage. Sounds good. But let's. Think about it. Let's peel off the layers. Your mortgage is, let's use the round number, 4%. If you pay off your um, mortgage 
much faster by giving extra money every month, the most return you're gonna get back in that 4%. Once you pay it off that 4%, you won't have to um, be paying an interest anymore. However, what if you were to take that extra money that you were paying to your lender every month and invest it in a security or in an investment vehicle that can give you a return higher than your mortgage? If your mortgage is 4%, and I can take the extra money that I was paying off to pay off to speed pay my mortgage and use that invest it in a vehicle that will give me a higher return, 10, 12, 15, 20%. Wouldn't that be smarter? Yes, it would be, right? When you look at the 15-year mortgage versus the 30-year mortgage, one of them is half the time. But if you look at the monthly amount with the 15-year compared to the 30-year, you're paying, you know, you're probably paying almost double. You know, the interest rate is a little lower, but you're paying a lot of money every month. Some of that money could have been used to invest into vehicles that will give you a high return. In fact, I looked at a study and they compared 15 year mortgage and a 30 year mortgage. And what it showed was that the 30 year mortgage, present the 30 year mortgage, they paid the lower amount, the lower amount, the lower amount. And the 15 year person is paying a higher amount. The 30 year, the person with the 30 year mortgage was paying the lower amount. And the additional amount that the difference between the 30-year mortgage and the 50-year mortgage, they were investing that into like the market, maybe S&P 500 index fund. The person on the 50-year mortgage said, I'm going to pay all this money first, right? And then after 15 years, when I'm mortgage-free, then I'll start to invest, right? So at, say, at the end of 15 years, this person on the 15-year mortgage has zero mortgage. After 15 years, they've paid it off. They have no more mortgage, they've completely paid off their house, but they have zero investments. The 30, you put in the 30 year, they still have 15 years to go. They still owe money on a mortgage, but their investment is already been compounding for 15 years. At the end of 30 years, the person who has been investing for 30 years will end up with about $200,000 more than the person with 15 years. They both add money, but the person with 30 years and with uh, more money. So paying off your house early, it's an emotional thing, it makes you feel good, but the additional money could be put into investment, earning a higher return. Let's keep going. Number six, bad financial advice that we have gotten. Invest, investing in the actively managed fund. Whether, I know I got that advice. My financial advisor told me that, listen, I'm in the same fund that I'm, putting you in. I didn't know anything about active or passive. I didn't know anything about it. I was busy going to the hospital, working, doing my shit. When I began to look into it, I would have, why is my account not moving? I mean, the only money in there is the money that I put in there. Where's the growth? Now I understand. This actively managed fund had cheese that was eating, out, eating at my principal. They would let money to grow. You know, we, and we've been conditioned by watching all this commercial with the couple on one side of the table and on the other side of the investment professional. And they're gonna apparently have your best interest at heart. Well, really. So, a passive investment or index fund had much lower fees. And because of the much lower fees, you're able to have more money to combine and grow. They said that over a 40 year investment career, a person with an actively managed fund will end up having $600,000 left. If they invest for 40 years, instead of ending up with a $1 million portfolio, which the passive person would have, the actively managed person, because of all the fees, just nickel and diamond you every time you invest, you will only end up with 400,000 as opposed to a million. So the question is, if your financial advisor worth $600,000, they're not looking out for your best interest, which goes into number seven, bad financial advice. You need a financial advisor. Because the assumption is they have my best interest at heart. There's something called the fiduciary standard, meaning 
they are looking out for your best interest. The financial, the financial sector, the financial industry, you know, they have powerful lobby and they lobby Congress to fight that. The Democrats are trying to bring it to the floor to say all financial advisors should uh, practice to the finance, to the fiduciary standard, meaning they have your best interest. The Republicans fought it because of all the lobbies and it failed. So now they only have to practice to the suitability standard, meaning it is suitable, which is the lowest standard. Meaning, I can say it's suitable for you to eat McDonald's a quarter pound and fry it every day. Suitable, meaning they have enough nutrition, protein, fats, minerals, carbohydrates to keep you alive. But is it the best for me? That's the difference. It is better than me eating my vegetables and me eating my oatmeal and, and my fruits and salad. No, that's for the standard. We're looking for the best for you. The suitability of it, it's suitable. But it's not to my benefit. So the answer is you don't need a financial advisor. You can invest and educate yourself and learn and get an S&P 500 or a total index fund and do just fine. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I'm just giving my, you my opinion here on YouTube. Okay, if you want to seek financial advice, obviously get a licensed professional and so on. Right? But when you look into it, you'll see what I'm saying is true. Okay? So these are some of the worst financial advice. I know you got them up there. You can link them. I'll correct you. You can, um, you can um, just uh, put in the comments some of the bad financial advice that you've gotten. And... Let's quickly run through them. Telling people that the stock market is a gamble. No. Number two, the savings account in the big bank are the best place to put your money. No. Bad advice. Telling people to avoid using credit card. Avoid them using credit cards incorrectly. But if you use the credit card smartly, not carry down, a lot of reward points, and uh, there are a lot of other benefits um, to using credit card. Number four, Telling people not to get into debt. Tell them not to get into stupid debt. But using um, money, you know, you're getting um, um, loans at a lower interest rate and using that to get a higher return, that's smart. Using OPM, other people's money. Paying off your house early may make you feel emotionally better, but the money, additional money you're using every month could be used to getting a higher return. And number six, investing in actually managed funds as opposed to index funds. Not, you don't want to do that. And number seven, people tell you you need a financial advisor. No, you could probably handle your finances on your own. So those are some of the top bad advice that I've gotten. That let me, you could uh, uh, put in the comment some of the bad advice that you've gotten. Another one I just thought about, bad advice. If not subscribing to the MD Investor, why aren't you subscribing to the MD Investor? Okay, we talk about money, we're talking about increasing our financial IQ so we can break the cycle of generational poverty. And until then, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the not notification bell so you'll be notified when new content comes out. And until then, I will see you on the next one.